Hero is a movie about a conversation between an emperor and his assassin, Nameless. It's revealed through their conversation that Nameless is from an enemy kingdom and is there to kill the emperor for what he has done to his people. But throughout the film, Nameless comes to realise that the emperor's main motivation for war is to actually unite all of the warring kingdoms and bring peace, saving lives in the long run. In this video, we're going to look at the way Taoist principles are expressed in Hero and the philosophy behind them. Of course, there will be spoilers and as a bigger warning, I'm probably going to slaughter the pronunciations of Mandarin words. Helping the nameless swordsman assassinate the emperor is Flying Snow, whose father was killed because of the empire's growth. Despite this, her desire for revenge is shown as incompatible with Taoist ideals. Retributive justice or payback for what she has suffered would be cathartic for anybody, but beyond this it would likely lead to more and more suffering for the kingdom as a whole, given the specifics of the situation. So her inability to step back from her own position, look at the broader scope of the Emperor's motivations and her intent to still murder him, as shown by this film to go against how we should try to regulate our emotions and adopt a view of justice that's more peaceful than violent. One of the core concepts in Taoism is Tao, and the best translation to English is probably just the word Wei. Things which have a Tao are typically prescriptive, which basically means they have something to say about the way things should be done. It would be fitting to say, for example, the Tao of religion, or you could even say the Tao of exercise. Explaining something as a Tao simply acknowledges the prescriptive nature of that particular thing, and then it invites further reflection on the methodology or mechanics behind it. If you started to look at the Tao of religion, for example, there might be something more to say about faith, or if you started to look at the Tao of exercise, you might want to stress the importance of discipline and consistency. In Taoist discussions, the importance of the concept of Tao brings something a bit different to the table than most Western philosophy. Whenever you're discussing a particular topic, if you project this idea of Tao onto it, you're inherently inviting further reflection on the methodology or mechanics behind that particular topic. So overall, it gives a practical meta aspect to whatever you decide to look at. Again, the translation for Tao is way or path. So this concept is useful in describing the prescriptive ethical structures that entail from things like revenge. So going back to Flying Snow, we can say the Tao of Flying Snow's revenge is less reflective, passionate, and driven by retributive justice. As a polar opposite to Snow is Broken Sword, who is actually from the same kingdom as the assassin, so has likely faced similar losses. We come to find that Broken Sword has previously had the chance to assassinate the Emperor, but came to the realisation of the Emperor's more peaceful intentions, and chose to spare his life. Eventually, Broken Sword gives up fighting and takes up calligraphy in its place. So fittingly, in his showdown with the assassin, instead of fighting, we see Broken Sword carve the character for our land in the sand. The idea behind this was to challenge the assassin's capacity for reflection over his ability with the sword. Two core concepts in Taoism which line up with Broken Sword's story are Ming and Pu. Both are linguistic and grammatical concepts, which is fitting for a character who decides to take up calligraphy. So firstly, Ming is the concept that a word, by necessity, picks out or names something within reality which falls under the scope of that word. So for example, the word table points out tables in reality, and the word ice cream also points out ice cream. Equally important to the concept of Ming is the idea that names point out what does not fall under their scope, so the category of table excludes chairs, and the word ice cream excludes dogs. Where this idea becomes especially important is when it's paired with the concept of Pu. Pu is an ideal state in Taoism where we completely forget Ming. It's commonly referred to as being an uncarved block. The idea behind this is that for the Taoist, Ming are socially constructed ideas which control our desires. So let's take something a bit more complex than tables and ice cream. What's the Ming of a successful life? It typically points out a high paying job or more material accomplishments. The Oxford Dictionary actually has the definition of success as the accomplishment of an aim or purpose, 
which almost implies an end result of accomplishment. And this could rule out things like Maslow's concept of self-actualization, which is more intrinsically a path of growth than a point of arrival. Even if the Ming of a successful life was to simply be happiness, this would rule out the experience of negative emotions like sadness, which are fairly essential to our development as individuals. So a direct takeaway here is that if we're able to detach from the socially prescribed structures, meanings, or sentiments that are behind the words we use, we can actually avoid the pursuit of things we don't naturally want. Again, going back to Broken Sword, when he writes the character for Our Land in the Sand, he's directly asking the assassin to forget the Ming of that character and exercise Pu by reinterpreting the significance of his decision to assassinate the Emperor, not just for himself, but for the entire kingdom. In Taoism, water is often used as an analogy for the path that should be taken in life. And Taoists believe we often fail to go down this ideal path when we're rigid in our opinions or approach. The challenge that the assassin faces is whether or not he is able to adapt when he reflects on the decision in front of him. We see throughout the entire movie that all protests from Broken Sword have failed, and the assassin is unable to pursue peace to the extent that he is still following through on the assassination attempt. So it's going to be the course of the conversation with the Emperor that will determine the Assassin's choice. Another one of the core concepts in Taoism is Wu Wei, which literally translates to without action. And it's often used alongside the phrase Wei Wu Wei, which is action without action. In many instances, this is an ideal type of behaviour for the Taoist. It's basically acting without the consideration of external or social influences and acting more on internal intuitions. A lot of us can relate to the idea that when we force things and try too hard, things can become more difficult to accomplish. In this way, it's fairly synonymous with just going with the flow. A common interpretation of this ideal is that it manifests itself once we're skillful in a particular domain, and when we perform that task, we take on a peaceful, non-thinking state of focus. This is basically identical to the flow state which was popularized in the 70s. So in summary, the Taoist concepts we've discussed are Tao, Ming and Pu, and Wu Wei. Consolidating all of these, the film represents the hero's journey through Broken Sword's calligraphy. When the assassin shows the Emperor Broken Sword's representation of the character for Sword, the Emperor explains his interpretation of what it means. To the left, there are two duplicate characters which represent where the warrior and the sword become one, with the sword eventually residing in the heart. And this is fairly similar to the idea of Wu Wei, and where the warrior reaches a skill level where they're able to enter the flow state. And secondly, the character to the right is the stage where the sword disappears and the warrior embraces everything around them with the desire to kill disappearing and having only peace remain. This is the stage where Pu is exercised over Ming and the warrior becomes an uncarved block, distancing themselves from the socially prescribed understanding of what it is to be a warrior and living in accordance with their natural state, which is more likely to be peaceful. And finally, after this discussion, we come to find out if the assassin can become a hero through Wei Wu Wei or action without action.